Welcome, welcome, one and all. We're thrilled to welcome all of you here today. Thank you for coming. Uh, there clearly were other choices of things that you could do on a beautiful fall, sunny November afternoon. We're delighted to have uh, all of you here today at Hunt's Photo here in Melrose and uh, having spent time in the Canon Gallery. Uh, the Canon rep is not here just yet, but will be coming in uh, shortly, and so uh, we'll hear from him when he, uh, when he arrives. Wonderful turnout today. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, uh, the purpose of the exhibit is uh, to highlight so the, the amazingly successful conservation efforts to protect and watch over the Peregrine Falcon over the last 30 years. Uh, it's really an amazing story, a bird that was very close to uh, extinction, and thanks to the mil many helping hands of so many people, uh, this is really all about a great uh, comeback story. And we'll hear a bit more about that from Tom French uh, in just a few minutes. So any event like this, for those of you who don't realize, takes a little bit of coordination and involves many different helping hands. So just bear with me as we just share a few thank yous and then uh, we'll call upon Norman to introduce Tom and I think you'll find Tom's uh, talk very interesting and provide a framework of understanding on why the Peregrine Falcon is so rare and so very uh, special. So the first thank you is to our friends at Hunt's Photo and Video. Chris Ginto in the back of the room has done an amazing job. <laughs> done a bald eagle exhibit uh, earlier this year, not even a year ago, in March. It was spectacular and it really highlighted the amazing comeback of the bald eagle in and around the Mystic Lakes and the Mystic River watershed. And Chris was good enough, based on some follow-up conversation from that event, to uh, warm up to the idea of doing what many might consider to be a little bit of a different photo exhibit. Um, it's not often. You might have songbirds, you might have birds of prey, you might have birds in flight, but it would be unusual to have part of the annual life cycle and the breeding cycle uh, of any bird, never mind a rare bird like the peregrine falcon. So when, when, when we talked with Chris, she came back and extended a warm invitation and she said, that sounds like it could be kind of interesting. And then Norman, uh, one of his, Liz Bastable, who he works with, um, and the Snowy Owl exhibit was done there years ago. I said to Liz, what we would do is have this come down to Blue Hills. And Liz said, hmm, that sounds like it might be interesting. And I think from what you all saw today of the photos in the gallery, it's absolutely fascinating. And uh, so we hope that you uh, totally enjoy the show. Chris did all of the work of, of organizing all of the incoming uh, images, the printing, the matting, the framing, the labeling, the hanging. It may sound like it gets done in a second. For those of you who know, it doesn't. It's a lot of work. Um, she had to deal with a lot of crossfire. She was wonderful every step of the way. Chris also was masterful at, again, setting up an online auction. Uh, for those of you who may not have been to the online auction site, you're encouraged to go there and visit, to bid, to get anybody else to come and do the same thing. Um, we uh, welcome you all to do that. And there's still, the, the bidding's going to be open for what, two more weeks? I think I extended it to the 16th. Okay, good, 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 good. And then Chris took care of laying out all of the, the snacks and beverages and Cooked making sure morning. there was a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. So thanks again. We, we were really appreciative. And uh, for those of you who haven't met, this is Gary Farber. Gary and his family own Hunt's photo, and he is the one in charge of welcoming us here today. So thank you, Gary. Next, I thought it might be appropriate to introduce the wonderful, capable, competent, gifted, and talented photographers that contributed to this great uh, exhibit. I'll uh, just ask everybody in the order when I call you out if you just stand up and remain standing. Stan Deutsch, Greg Ohanian, Andy Kawa, Chris Key, John Blout, Jay Richards not here, Nancy Gower, Mingwei Lee, John Harrison, Judd Nathan, Lee Scott, Ken, Harold, Jim Renault, Mary Jane, and Changde. If you'd all just stay standing for a moment. These photographers, I can tell you, because I was out there with them, they put in endless hours. Many of them were there from first light, sometimes until after sunset, and not always on sunny days, sometimes under cloudy and windy and rainy conditions. 
a very collaborative group that found a way to work together this year, very respectful of the private property owners and tenants and the properties around, and they shared with one another through a group email both photos and observations and all of that, and the result of their work is in the gallery. We thank you all. Thank you. We were blessed to have a very distinguished panel of judges. It would have been easy for the photos to come in and then for Chris and I to kind of say, well, what do you think, you know? <laughs> and, we, and Chris and I, from before, have very different opinions on what might be an award-winning photograph, right? So um, my wife, Nancy, who just walked in with a Dunkin' Donuts cup in the back, says hello to everybody. <laughs> we were on, we were on a, a National Geographic cruise in Alaska in June and had a chance to really spend some time talking with Brenda Tharp, who's one of the judges, and she does a lot of these National Geographic things, very talented photographer, a number of books, and she said I'd be happy to. And then when I got back, I thought it'd be nice to have some local people. And so we have three award-winning, well-known nature and bird photographers who judged the entries this year, the submissions, and so in addition to Brenda, we have Mark Wilson and Sean Carey, both from the local area, both very, very well known. Uh, they put a lot of time and en energy reviewing all of the submissions, and then we had another, another huddle this week to iron out the final who comes where, because it's not as easy as it might appear, and we're very grateful for both Sean and for Mark, and they're going to be presenting in just, uh, just a little bit. Thank you so much. able to engage many community partners who were happy to be supportive and encouraging and, and they include uh, Canon USA, the Peregrine Fund, Earthspan is a group that does per Arctic Peregrine Banding down in South Padre Island. I had a chance to get down uh, with them and uh, absolutely spectacular. Eastern Mass Hawk Watch, Sean Carey is currently Vice President, Vice President and Major Domo. Uh, New Hampshire Audubon, the, the, the Illinois uh, Peregrine program out of the Field Museum, and, and that's going to be relevant in a minute. Uh, Martinetti Real Estate, Mass Wildlife, Mass Audubon, Migration Research Foundation, Midwest Peregrine Society, of course, UNS, uh, the Center for Conservation Biology, the Raptor Research Foundation, and Ray Brown, who's with us here today and Talking Birds. The photographers here, the Raptor Research Foundation reached out and asked if all of the contributing photographers would send the Raptor Research Foundation their photos to kind of build up and beef up their archive, and uh, it was a nice, uh, very nice invitation. Uh, we have with us Mr. Ray Brown from Talking Birds. For those of you who don't know, the Talking Birds radio show is a live, interactive, call-in show with a big focus on wild birds and the beauty of nature. And when we're all out doing the photography work, part of what we're able to take in is always the beauty of nature, the beauty of the outdoors. Uh, Ray has a 30-year uh, history in uh, broadcast journalism. You want to just say one thing about the show or invite him to, to dial in? Sure. Thank you, Craig. Uh, I know some of you know about our show because several of you have been guests on the show. But uh, if you don't, uh, we're on Sunday morning, 9.30 to 10 on a bunch of radio stations around New England, and we live stream and podcast the show as well. So if you'd like to check us out, the uh, web address, pretty easy to remember, it's talkingbirds.com. But we remind you to not put a G in there, because if you put a G, you get a pet store in Albuquerque. <laughs> 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 it's talkingbirds.com, check it out. Thank you. Good, thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. Thank you. Two last things. Um, we're delighted again, as we were at the Bald Eagle exhibit, to welcome Don Lyman. Don is a reporter from the Boston Globe. He had covered the Bald Eagle story earlier this year. It was very well received. The Globe uh, felt it was important to have somebody here. Don had proposed, and they had said, absolutely, we'd like to have some coverage here. I know Don has had a chance to talk with many of you, and uh, we're, we're very, very grateful to have you here on behalf of the Globe, and we look forward to a wonderful story. <laughs> Renault is here. One thing that we didn't have reason to focus on, uh, and Tom will, I'm sure, touch on this, is, is these peregrine chicks, as is usually the case under, you know, normal or reasonable conditions, at a certain point, uh, three weeks plus into the growth curve, it's about 40 days before from when they hatch until they make first flight. 
And um, every year there's an effort made by Tom French and Norman, along with many other citizen, citizen scientists volunteers, to put a band on, both a federal and a state band, on the legs of the peregrine so they can be tracked in the future. Jimmy, you want to just? Well, yeah, it was uh, another one of our um, kind of uh, cool June days. I guess it was about 90 plus <laughs> June 18th. And uh, we were down at the, uh, the cliff. And we were um, surprised one day by a visit by Tom and his uh, very extremely capable crew dropping in on us. And I do mean literally dropping in on us <laughs> because uh, a couple of them went up on top of the cliff and set up uh, uh, a rope and um, kind of came down and actually uh, um, belayed their way down to the nest area, which uh, a few of us who happened to have been there that day uh, were uh, able to, you know, kind of watch this happen. And it wasn't a, a quick event, but it did take some time and planning, both for safety of the people that were involved as well as the, uh, the birds themselves. And it was quite an event, as I said, and it was, um, it was kind of neat, and I was able to grab a few shots, and I put together a little collage here. And Tom, this is for you. If you want to take it with you, you can take it wherever you Thank want. You. If you want to mount it someplace, I'd be glad to you. You know, see that um, put together somehow, and uh, whatever. But I was uh, extremely impressed by the professionalism that uh, your crew you know, exhibited by you know, the care and the, uh, you know, the, the very expediency that they do uh, in, in doing this. And quite frankly, I couldn't believe that that guy came down that cliff with two you know, adult peregrines dive bombing them. And I mean, there's no way I would want to get in the way of those two birds. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he did it, he did it very well. The birds came up safely, as we all know, and um, they all got their name tags, and we all know them by numbers now. But uh, it's very, very uh, entertaining, as I said. It's very, uh, very interesting to see the process take, um, take place in person. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Well, Appreciate it. Well, well, So our guest speaker today is Tom French, who will be introduced in a moment by his uh, longtime friend of decades, uh, Norman Smith. Uh, Tom is Mr. Peregrine in Massachusetts, and uh, hopefully he'll tell you how many peregrines he's banded individually in over how many years. And we just thought um, that it would be appropriate, and Norman was good enough to respond, the proceeds from the online auction will go to benefit the Mass Audubon uh, trailside, Blue Hills Trailside Museum down in Milton, and uh, every year, among other times, Norman and uh, Tom get together and go up to the Custom House Tower in Boston uh, to band. Uh, so if you join me in a warm round of applause for Norman Smith, who will introduce Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Norman. 